me here with our mystery reader for Giraffes Can't Dance. And what is your favorite color? My favorite color is purple. Ooh, and what is your favorite flavor of ice cream? My favorite flavor of ice cream is mint chocolate chip. Yeah. And do you have any brothers or sisters? I have two sisters. Okay. And do you have any pets? I do. I have a dog and I have a cat. And that cat that just kind of jumps in anybody's car, right? It does, Yeah, actually. I think it jumped in my car one it time. It did, that's yeah, true. Yeah, it did, yeah. Um, and um, what's your favorite thing to do? My favorite thing to do is to go golfing. Okay, golfing. And what is your favorite Emmons memory? Let's see. Hmm, my favorite Emmons memory is probably... When we dressed, we made Mr. Heaney into a Heaney hot dog. Oh, I do remember that. Still getting the onions and relish out of my ears. Uh, so, and let's, that's it for our mystery reader, and let's go on to the book. Giraffes Can't Dance, written by Giles Andre. Gerard was a tall giraffe whose neck was long and slim, but his knees were awfully bandy and his legs were rather thin. He was very good at standing still and munching shoots off trees. But when he tried to run around, he buckled at the <laughs> Now every year in Africa, they hold a jungle band where every single animal turns up to skip and prance. And this year, when the day arrived, poor Gerald felt so sad because when it came to dancing, he was really very bad. The warthogs started waltzing and the rhinos rock and roll. Lions danced a tango, which was elegant and bold. The chimps all did a cha-cha with a very Latin feel. And eight baboons then teamed up for a splendid Scottish reel. Gerard swallowed bravely as he walked towards the floor. But the lions saw him coming and they soon began to roar. <laughs> hey, look at clumsy Gerald! The animals all laughed. Giraffes can't dance, you silly fool. Oh, Gerald, don't be a daft. Gerald simply froze up. He was rooted to the spot. They're right, he thought. I'm useless. Oh, I feel like such a clot. So he crept off from the dance floor and he started walking home. He'd never felt so sad before, so sad and all alone. Then he found a little clearing and he looked up at the sky. The moon can be so beautiful, he whispered with a sigh. Hmm. Excuse me, coughed the cricket, who'd seen Gerald earlier on. But sometimes when you're different, you just need a different song. Listen to the swaying grass and listen to the trees. To me, the sweetest music is those branches and the breeze. So imagine that a lovely moon is playing just for you. Everything makes music, if you really want it to. With that, the cricket smiled and picked up his violin. Then Gerald felt his body do the most amazing thing. His hooves had started shuffling, making circles on the ground. His neck was gently swaying, and his tail was swishing round. He threw his arms out sideways, and he swung them everywhere. Then he did a backward somersault and leapt up in the air. Gerald felt so wonderful, his mouth was open wide. I am dancing! Yes, I am dancing! I am dancing, Gerald cried. 
Then one by one, each animal who'd been there at the dance arrived while Gerald boogie and watched him quite entranced. They shouted, it's a miracle. We must be in a dream. Gerald's the best dancer that we've ever seen. How is it you can dance like that? Please, Gerald, tell us how. But Gerald simply twizzled round and finished with a bow. Then he raised his head and looked up at the moon and stars above. We all can dance, he said, when we find music that we love.